We're here at the, yeah, we're here, we're here at the Climate Hub, just doing a quick swim around just to show, just to show where we are. Um, Chris, is, Chris is here, we're, we're really visiting the Access All Aerial site, but Chris, it was claimed that wheelchair access is possible. Yeah, it was, it was very good to get in, I will demonstrate. Okay. And there's the QR thing on the door. The QR code? Yeah. Well that's pretty good. We'll get we'll get the QR code in a bit. Yeah, well you come that's pretty much flat from the street, isn't it? Yeah. So the access is very good and I will I'll test the QR code. Okay, right. Well while you're testing the QR code. Could you introduce yourself and then what what people could expect from the Climate Hub? Okay, so my name's Chris, Chris Wood, and um, the Climate Hub is basically a, a place where a, an umbrella group of organisations, local groups in Exeter, can have a public-facing um, area, so members of the public can come in and talk to us on all sorts of subjects. Um, Obviously, you can tell from the name Climate Action Hub that the, where many of our groups are primarily interested in helping educate the public about the um, climate and ecological crises. Um, but in our opinion, there are many crises um, interwoven, as, you know, social justice. So we've got um, groups such as Black Lives Matter um, and, and Feed the Community involved as well. So we've got about, I think, 30 different organisations um, involved here. Um, there's quite a lot of people from Extinction Rebellion here um, and there's a discussion in the climate activist movement at the moment about whether um, we should be doing things that are more moderate, um, like educating the public, or we should, whether we should be doing the things that um, groups such as Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion are kind of a bit better known for, which is getting out on the streets and doing things that can be outrageous, that really attract attention from the media and, um, and, and get in the public's face. Um, and so there's these two different approaches. And the Climate Action Hub is, is one of the um, moderate movements. So there's a... Um, a philosopher called Rupert Reed, who was involved in Extinction Rebellion at the start, and he's very much of the opinion that um, a moderate flank is needed on climate activism, of engaging with the public as opposed to um, annoying them. Um, personally, I think that both approaches are equally valid. Um, my, my time and focus at the moment is, is on this moderate um, flank. So we have set up the Climate Action Hub here, um, we have got a year's lease from Princess Hay, which is fantastically um, appreciated. Um, we've got at least 80% off the business rates. We've applied for um, the further 20%. The way that that works, as, as probably many of you know that have um, seen charity shops, is that um, charities get 80% off um, business rates as a mandatory thing. The government, that's legislated. Um, and then it's up to the councillors to whether they give you the other 20% and um, I'm hopeful that we will get that too because we don't have an awful lot of money um, as um, things are tight well, no, for everybody. It's not, it's not a shop either. You're not, it's not a shop, no. So you're we, giving away apples as far as I can see. Yes, these, these are apples from my, my own orchard. Um, we've bottled 120 bottles of apple juice and um, basically, uh, that's all I had the capacity to do. So we've got some apples, and next time you come in, there might even be some pears there because um, we've got a pear tree that's, that's flourished this this year. Yeah. So I think from a you've got a reasonable case on on the business rates. I would think <laughs> we'll see see what happens to that. But Extinction Rebellion, then they're, they're supporting the, the idea of information and a softer approach as part of what's going on. The, the local groups certainly are, um, and I think you'll find this a, a, around um, Extinction Rebellion um, generally. There are some that are very much focused on um, high-profile actions, 
and there are others that think that um, in order to put pressure on the government, we need a lot of people that are um, in favour of action, not, not necessarily getting on the streets, but governmental action. It's all very well suggested to people that they um, cycle more, fly less, eat less meat, all these things that you know we can advise people to do. But these are, and, and, and they're great on an individual level, but the problem is that we're in a system that um, it's very hard to have a significant effect as an individual. We need companies, the media and government to radically change things. Um, the warnings that are coming out on an almost constant basis now from, from the IPCC, um, from even the um, government's own advisory body, are saying that governments are missing their targets um, to keep the rise of um, temperatures to an average of 1.5 above um, you know, the, the 1980s um, rates. And we're, we're looking at somewhere between a two degree and four degree um, increase in temperature, global average temperatures. And that is basically catastrophic. Um, every time people start saying numbers, the BBC, other, other people, I think it's, um, it's his name, Robinson has, has just been challenged. He said that um, governments are not aware that millions of people will die if climate isn't seriously addressed. But in fact, they, governments do know it, and they are aware of it. They have, there are other vested interests. There are lobbyists, there's the media, who are actively fighting against making the changes that need to be made on a systematic basis. So, going, going off slightly at a tangent, but it, it makes sense to us. We're, we're from Phonic FM, a wild show, which is on at the moment but JD is taking care of the studio we came over to to the access all aerial studio which is in the shallow just yep. opposite you um, there's an electricity problem at the moment but we'll, we'll see how that that works out um, but what what occurred to us is is that um, people from here from the climate hub might visit them and be interviewed because their microphones are good their recording is good They've got, when they've got electricity, they've got a direct uh, broadcast facility, but it can be recorded for future use. So I just wonder what, what, what you'd thought already about recording meetings or discussions that happen in this space, and whether you're going to try and ma make it available through social media or whatever mechanism. Be very happy. Um, every workshop and, thing, and, and things like that that we do here, we would ha be happy to ask that question. Um, obviously, all the participants would need to be happy with it, but I can't see any reason why they wouldn't. Um, we, we have got some workshops coming up. There's one that was just arranged just yesterday, which is um, from the University of Exeter, have asked if they can use the space on the 9th of November, I believe it is, from, from 6 till 9, and that's following up from their recent uh, presentation that they did on social tipping points which is something that Extinction Rebellion are very well aware of. There's, there's a kind of magic number of 3.5 percent of the population that Extinction Rebellion want to try and get on the streets um, and social tipping points are really interesting. You know, how, do we, how do we get the government to change their policies? We get that by having enough members of the public expressing their um, opinion either at the voting um, box or or putting pressure on politicians via letter writing or in constituency um, meetings. Um, so yes, so that's a tipping point follow-up um, and be very happy to ask if um, we can record that. We've got all sorts of other meetings. We have um, just trying to think which ones would be suitable for um, for recording, um, some of them, some of these uh, workshops aren't kind of directly climate oriented. So we've got things like a non-violent communications workshop that we're doing here. Um, we will also be running fresque workshops, which I'd be very happy to um, to video and record. That's um, I might as well explain that a little bit. 
Sure. So, so Fresque, F-R-E-S-K, I believe it's of French origin. It's an educational workshop on the climate change. So my understanding is that effectively that um, you, you are the IPCC or some other group like that that has lots of information from, um, from scientists, climate scientists, and the idea is that you work out what policies you would enact as the IPCC or a government or even a company, um, what, what you think are appropriate um, reactions and policies to put in place to tackle the problems of the climate and ecological crises. Right. And would you, would you go over into fiction or drama if, the, if that was, if it was available, if people want to use the space for climate-related Yes, we have actually, you just reminded me, um, we have, um, Lavinia is, um, has proposed that she does some theatre workshops for children to express their um, feelings about um, climate change and the crisis, climate crisis. So obviously the, the, younger, the younger generations are those who are going to be impacted most by what our generations have done to the ecosphere. Right. Well, I think, I think that's a good introduction. We've, we've gone over ten minutes, so... I, think, <laughs> I, I don't have talk, don't I? No, which is good. <laughs> which is excellent. So, look, I think we'll just check what, how far Chris got with the QR code. Cool. Um, it loaded up the website and I had a brief look. It was all about the Exeter Climate Hub. Um, and I had a look and it was quite good. I'll see if I've still got it on oh, my Oh, come bed. on, oh, come on. Oh, I guess so. Uh, wrong one. Uh, here it is. Hang, hang on, hang on. Just, just get, in the, get in the code. And here it is on the on the phone. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Chris, I think we can say wheelchair access. Yes, that definitely works. Yeah. And your QR code works as well. Cool. Um, I've got a couple of things that I could say about accessibility if you're interested. Yes. Because um, that's of primary concern to us. Um, some of yeah. our groups were meeting in places that weren't accessible. So there was loos just upstairs without a lift. And that was very important to us to have a space that was accessible. Um, in fact, our patron of our charity is James Brown, who's a Paralympian. Um, he's uh, registered blind. Um, uh, he's our patron. And he's got a company called Mobilu, which provides um, mobile um, toilets for the um, people that are less, less um, physically able. Um, when we moved in here, our first intention was in that space there, that changing room with quite a wide door, was to put an accessible loo in there. Um, funding, of course, would be quite a would be quite a problem. We're, we're talking about a, a budget of about five thousand pounds. And then when we um, took the lease on, we found that in fact that there is an accessible loo just twenty seconds walk from here which we have um, a key card to. So we have put that on hold, um, but if we were to put um, toilet facilities in here, they would be accessible. Well, that's great. Yeah, well, that's, that's brilliant. Well, thank you. And I think, I think we'll be back. Cool. See what else is going on. Excellent. <laughs>